welcome to Winchester News Online. I'm George Berridge and here are today's top stories. Students march against tuition fees. Eastleigh MP launches counter-attack. We can't go around having referendums every other week. That's off to Winchester graduates. And in sport, fighting for medals as Team GB fencing visits Winchester. Today the nation sees further protests in students against the rise in tuition fees. In a similar scene to last November, students are gathering in London in a bid to show their opposition to the government's ever-changing policies on education. We can now go to London where Tom Morgan has more on this story. I'm here outside the University of London Union building, which marks the start of today's student protest march. Protesters are here to dispute the rise in tuition fees, which have reached £9,000 per year. The event is organised by the National Campaign Against Fees and Cuts and is also supported by the NUS. Police have stated that they will be prepared to use force if protesters become hostile. Tom Morgan, Winchester News Online, London. Lib Dem MP Chris Yoon fights back on the European issue. The Hampshire MP has recently been in the middle of a media storm involving his ex-wife, who recently expressed her own desire to become a Member of Parliament. In this exclusive interview to Winnell, he commented on the recent debates raging around the referendum. Neighbouring MPs Chris Hewn and Steve Bryan may be in the same government, but a coalition splits on the question of the European Union. We can't go around having referendums every other week, uh, merely because it happens to be uh, a few people think that it's a sensible idea. All of the South Hampshire Conservative MPs, I think, uh, who are not in the government uh, supported the in out referendum, which may have more to do with the looming reselection contests as they attempt to get selected as Conservative candidates for fewer Hampshire seats uh, than it does to do with their actual assessment of the uh, fundamentals of the issue. As a local Lib Dem conference took place at the weekend, the Energy Secretary reassured his members on other issues. Our ambition. Uh, to be the greenest government ever, as the Prime Minister said, is absolutely undimmed. And uh, as long as I'm in the government, I think you take it, it's going to happen. The debate on Europe is set to continue, as debt crisis is now spreading to Italy and threatens the balance of the Eurozone. Julie Cordier for Winchester News Online. Barton Farm in North Winchester has once again sparked debate. Local residents are arguing the need to preserve the area of open land against the council's need to develop more affordable housing. Lewis O'Brien reports. The ongoing debate over the housing development at Barton Farm has once again heated up. The argument over the proposed plans for 2,000 new homes at the Brownfield site was discussed at a Question Time style forum at the Theatre Royal Winchester on the 27th of October. If the proposed plans are not accepted, it may leave Winchester City Council's housing pledge of 4,000 new homes over the next 20 years at risk. Winchester cannot demonstrate that it's got the space for the necessary houses for the next 20 years as required by the department. And secondly, that the uh, inspector's decision, whilst it was overturned by the minister, uh, did indicate that this was a very sustainable and probably the best location. However, another topic that arose from the meeting was the need to help first-time buyers in the current economic climate. And what we need here is housing for local people, largely rented housing, because the present housing is so expensive that something like 80% of local people would never be able to afford a mortgage to live locally. The debate over the housing problems in Winchester continues. The final strategy will be announced at the next meeting of the Winchester Town Forum on the 23rd of November. Lewis O'Brien, Winchester News Online. Protests in Bournemouth have been summoned to court over their camping on Town Hall property. The move is the first action taken by Bournemouth City Council against the Occupy Bournemouth movement. The warrant request for their removal is still being processed and the protesters have not made an appeal against their court order. The council has stated they still hope the protesters will leave peacefully. And in an update on Winchester's uncollected bins, the council has said that it is working hard to clear the backlog of uncleared rubbish, with 20 crews out picking up the waste last weekend. Priority is being given to those who have waited the longest for their bins to be collected, and it's hoped the service will be back to normal by the end of the week. 
Now, with the population rising, school capacities are reaching their max, making it harder for pupils to ensure a place in education. The Hampshire County Council received a helping hand this week after they were awarded a government grant to help expand primary schools. Lee Jarvis has this report. Hampshire County Council has received a government grant of £7.8 million to be spent on developing and expanding primary schools. The grant was given to 100 councils across the country to ease the demand for school places in counties with the highest school capacities as a result of a rising birth rate. The council has said that the money will be put to good use. It's always good news to, to get extra money out of the government. We know that economic conditions are, are very tight, but Hampshire has now got an additional seven, nearly eight million pounds. Well, we've got to spend the money cost effectively. I suspect that our, our first instincts will be to look to see where we have the capacity to, to expand existing schools. Teachers across the county have also welcomed the news. Amazing news. Any, any monies that are going to help the children is obviously beneficial. There are building programmes that have stopped, which means that that money will be able to um, help those to continue. The council will now spend the next few months deciding where the money will be best spent. Lee Jarvis, Winchester News Online. And now it's time to go to the sport with Cara. Thank you, George. Revealed this week the upcoming locations for the Olympic torch. Over the next 70 days, the torch will travel almost 8,000 miles to 1,018 places. Mikey Smith reveals whether this nationwide relay will be arriving in your area. It has this week been confirmed that the Olympic torch will be carried through Winchester on the 11th of July 2012. The torch relay has never been through Winchester, and before it reaches the city, it will be passing through Basingstoke and then Kingsworthy, and after reaching Winchester, the relay will be passing through Andover in West Hampshire and then Salisbury in Wiltshire. So I predict a very blue, white and red Hampshire on the 11th of July. And staying on the Olympics theme, members of the Great Britain fencing team were in Winchester on Monday to teach university sports students all about their sport. I was there to check it out. Two members of the Great Britain fencing team were in Winchester this week to teach Winchester students all about their sport. Olympic hopefuls Tom Bennett and Katie Dolan Tuled and gave tips before allowing the sports study students to have a go themselves. Performance consultant and former Winchester student Jonathan Rhodes also gave a talk and he seemed unsure of Great Britain's chances of ending their fencing medal drought which stretches back 48 years. Hopefully we have a couple of Olympic hopefuls. Um, it's, it's a complete um, lottery really when it comes to, uh, when it comes to fencing. It's, it depends on the, on the pools depends on the seedings as well, so um, it's not very predictable, but hopefully we, we can produce uh, at least one, at least one uh, medal at the 2012 Olympics. Mikey Smith for Winchester News Online. Now to football, and Eastley saw off Maidenhead United at the weekend to continue their recent run of good form. Goals from Chris Flood, Graham Montgomery and a double from striker Jamie Slabber secured the 4-1 win. The victory sees Eastley rise to 14th in the Blue Square South table. And AFC Totten have their FA Cup first round match this weekend, but first they had to get past Team Solent in the Russell Coates Cup on Tuesday night. Despite resting 10 first team players, Totten won 4-1, with two from Michael Charles and goals from Mike Gosney and Mark Osman. They will face a trip to Winchester City in the next round on the 16th of November. Well, that's been all from me. Back to you, George. Thank you, Cara. And finally, Winchester students are graduating in style at a prestigious venue in the city centre. The ceremonies are to take place all week and there will be certainly be no shortage of happy faces. Felicity Houston went down to see the festivities. Graduation, one of the biggest days in a student's life. The University of Winchester has been hosting its graduation ceremonies at Winchester Cathedral throughout this week. A week which will see over 1,500 students getting their degrees. Georgie and Penny Hannon are two of them. They are identical twins, receiving identical business management degrees, which were sponsored by the same employer. Yeah. This day is so much fun. It's, it's all about you. It's a good experience. <laughs> Something you'll probably never really experience again unless you get married, then that's probably the next best big day you've yeah. got. A procession of councillors starting from Abbey House, the official residence of the mayor, made its way through the city centre to the cathedral. I, uh, I'm very happy. I'm pleased that I've done it. I've, uh, it's worked hard, played hard, but um, we finally got there, so it's really good to kind of have this day and uh, really experience Winchester like this. So, yeah. Felicity Houston, Winchester News Online. 
Well, that's been all for this week, but for more award-winning news and support, don't forget to log on to winalt.co.uk. And from all of us here, goodbye.